the audience to answer. Uh, we love that that drill, the engineer who all answered. I love that. Um, good morning. Thank you for coming to this day. Thank you for the invitation. John Hume and Randy Norton. So those those two guys were, were um, they continue to be instrumental for the work that we do in this area. So I want to start with this image that somebody in Saskatchewan made with a, with a sprayer. So maybe they have a lot of time in their hands when the leaves are all uh, frozen up, up there and they can play with these things. But for me, what will grab my attention is look at what new technology can do. Use a sprayer as a printer. That's what you do it. It's, it's using files that are georeferenced and and, uh, and then varying the rate of whatever dye they use, water and dye perhaps, and, uh, and they're able to do this. So if they can do this for fun, can you imagine how many things can be done with a different uh, mindset? Is so much control on the system and the delivery of the chemicals that we want uh, to save chemicals to apply only with their full range. So, this is just an introduction that way. And I'll say this my presentation is mainly uh, formative. I want to provide you with uh, some, an update. And I also want to clarify many of the uh, concepts that. We hear we are bombarded with information, and I want to just set clear some of those concepts that I, I consider uh, essential. So, as a fact, there's this statement was published in 2005, and they were relating to um, the history of, of spot spray. So, I don't know if you can see this image well enough. So ask Karen, that is my question. I think Did you Karen, can you explain that to me? How did it work? Um, it was real uncomfortable. <laughs> well, that's excellent, right? Yeah. Oh, I don't know, but a lot of people, like you said, okay. good, good point. But, but, but the idea was that you, you know, used your eye to find the media and a handful and spray it. Right. I think. So, no, it, it, I think obvious by that, by the, by the image, right? Um, but in, in, in this paper, he, he added this text, and I, I will just want to take it to a very nice sentence. It's, um, the practice provided effective management of otherwise difficult to control. He's talking about this, right, in 2005. So, of course, this looks 50 years ago, and conditions have changed we, for a lot of reasons, economical, uh, safety, etc. Uh, this is not allowed. So let's review where we are and what can be implemented today. So in this program that I lead at the U of A, uh, we have objectives. We want to bring these objectives to fruition in, in areas that I listed here. First, efficiency. We want to see, we want to use commercial available technology. We don't do R&D ourselves. We just take things off the shelf. We integrate them, and then this is what we do. And the best way is demonstrations. So we'll wait for, for a new session, and we can go out in the field and do this. Um, effective weight control. And this is a key point I want to say. <clears throat> I'm an engineer. I can only go up to the point of weak detection, knowing that there will be a, a, a spray once a weed has been detected. Okay? That's all I can do. I am not a weak scientist. I'm not trained in weak science. I cannot deal with chemistries and timing and other things. That's for a different reason. My work is only an engineer. So um, it is environmentally sound 
in the context of um, herbicide resistance. Um, the other thing that I want to do very specifically is to work on operational parameters that fit our conditions, right? That big sprayer that nice, it, it's, it's like a 70 feet wide machine. Um, it's difficult to see how that will operate in, in Arizona. Economy, labor, health savings, those are things will add up. And first, back up to the efficiency of the system, right? Small gains reflect in a larger sum. And then safety, of course. And I, I guess I've listed this, but in my heart, really safety and the operator is, is the most important, the most important resource that we ever care for. Okay, so we can reduce handling and exposure from this. Uh, here you have uh, a graph, uh, visual of what we can do. We have done in 2020, uh, we did a meeting that a, a brand from so, I mean, the technology is from one European country, Northern Europe, that's what it is, uh, very popular in Australia. And then in 2021, we started working with Wheat Seeker 2, the new generation Wheat Seeker, which is built by Trimble. That's an American. All right, so let's review what, what we have here. I will now jump to the two um, key technological technology conference, okay? So, first of all, let's get this very, very clear. The work that I do, these systems that I'm implementing here are sensor-based systems. We use electronics of different kinds, GPS, and different combinations, different forms, right? But we are relying on advanced computational algorithms in the controller. That's why you buy off the um, uh, I will be uh, a get, get your, 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 your equipment. Very, very advanced. We have algorithms to see changes and then make adjustments. On the right, we have uh, the, everybody talks about the John Deere scene spray. That is uh, a camera based system. A camera that is looking down, and that is extremely complex, high end engineering, and that is machine learning based. Okay? So, the difference between the two, I mean, that are, are, are obvious and, and tremendous, but I'll say cost, that is at least tenfold difference in cost. So, as you're doing your, 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 your farming and you're making uh, business decisions, of course, cost will be out of, out of, of your decision making. And um, if, if there's a system like this that can give you substantial savings, but not compared to the AI system, well, it, it's up to you, right? It's, it's pros and cons. Uh, John Deere tends to have fully integrated systems. So there's little you can do. You have to be John Deere centric for your solution. Uh, but these other systems that I'm working with are retrofits. I like that system. And, and those of you that I've known for some time, Terry, um, I like technology that can be used on existing machinery so that it, it advances to the next level. Right? So that's, that's like my, my philosophy in all this. Um, <clears throat> okay. Second, let's talk about detection and actuation. First of all, on the on this uh, right circle, it's it's a sensor system, right? It's a sensor unit, a sensor head. And let's talk about this. First of all, these are the category of optical sensors. What they do is that they sense light that is reflected back from the from the camera, it, and it registers light on a single part of the of electromagnetic spectrum. In the red, in the blue, um, those two are very common. Um, it ha they have their own light source, that's what they call those active systems. <coughs> active systems, so this is the light source, and it registers back here. And again, mentioned to you about um, new 
uh, algorithm in the system, they just compute it automatically. That's, that's a very uh, a great advantage compared to the VSeeker one. The original system, it had no adjustability on the go. Um, on, the, on the right, actuation. That is the fancy way to say spread. What, what happens with that signal? So the controller sends the signal and it's offset at go. Um, in some cases, what we do is to say, all right, spray six inches before the week, six inches after the week, to make sure that we cover um, the week in, in addition to uh, weeks that might be there, that might be smaller in, in this size. Okay, but that is a job. And um, it's out, outside of that, the spray component is, is the simplest spray plumbing that you can think about. There's a tank regulator, and uh, it has to be a centrifugal pump. So you keep the pressure at the, at the tip of the nozzle, and once the signal gets there, it opens and sprays at the right pressure. Okay. In this system, what you see, what you see is a very simple environment. I don't know if it's very clear to you that there's a spray down here, but this is a nozzle. You see a, a small triangle here. And you maybe can see some of the droplets coming down. I'm sorry, I didn't have a better picture because it's, it's, uh, it's a spray in this particular weed, uh, this piece of grass. <clears throat> All right, so <clears throat> close to our key to understand, let's talk about non geometry. Again, another fully understood factor, which is critical, essential. The first of the sense of the view. Which is constant. Sense of field of view F of B is it's the area that is that is seen by the sensor, right? It's a triangular um, it's shape, right? And this is just an angle from this layer, whatever angle is here. So you can see with this triangle that if you change the sensor position, you say you put it down here, well, you're only going to cover the smaller section. That's the relevance of field of view. So field of view is a critical element to decide how, how high should I put this sensor. If I want to go lower, I increase the signal strength, that's true. But you will, I'm also then developing the need for more sensing units. Our goal in our work in my program is to Work out the details so that we have only one sensor unit per row. That's my goal. Okay? And you can find many, many dealers want to have units to include some group components. It's a much better, quite a, a core that costs you high to double in terms of the sensing unit. So, um, on the let's do number four spray shields, sprayer shields. This is something that, that's interesting um, for me in, in, my, in my way to visualize things that are outside our, our own boundaries because we can put whatever shape we want. And if we are able to build this, this our in house uh, shields to shield the cotton plant from the field of view of the sensor, we are we're limiting the field of view to not be. Affected by the common plan. Therefore, we expand the area where we can see, where we can locate these and then spray them completely under our, our, our capacity of doing it. If it's an opportunity, in, in your capacity, guys, it's, it's clear that you can uh, adapt these things to your own needs, to your own crops, to your own conditions. Okay? So, uh, but also, there is very common the use of shields. For uh, the, the nozzle, so the key directly under control. Still a valid point there. All right, so number uh, next one is why is the type of sensor also commonly um, uh, found in, in, uh, in information about what kind of system we have? So here is a very good example of found online. Of a green on brown valve. Okay. 
So in this case, follow whatever is written there. Boom, get sprayed with the PCF. You have much of a constraint to be now. Uh, the work that we do in cotton is really green and brown as well, but it's on raw crops. So then we have to make more adjustments. And a piece of work that we are starting this coming this year, 2022, is to do green on green. Yeah, the, the principle here is the reflectance on areas where there are only cotton plants. This is smaller than areas where there is cotton plants and wheat together. Okay, so that's differential. That's what we're going to be using. So like areas where we can spray. And 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 um, where there's only cotton, although there is significant reflection, we will not spray. That's the goal. Another key point, uh, um, point is what's what's a camera base? What is a sensor base? So I've been talking exclusively on sensor base. Let's go camera. And there is uh, there are more points to make on this uh, on this uh, picture. This is called precision plant. They make precision with plant planter components. And now they're getting into this spraying business with this the small camera and, and other components there. So. Um, this is a retrofit, camera-based retrofit, AI driven. Okay, our work that we will do um, it's it's more modest. Of course, we want to just get started. And this is an old picture, but showing you how we deploy a four-band camera, so we can do something similar and start testing in our capacity. Once this product becomes available in the in market. And uh, we'll be ready for that. All right, uh, let's now jump into operational parameters. First is, uh, and now going to be a little more uh, making comparison, a little more clear between weed IT and weed seeker 2. First, the controller. So, weed IT controller tends to be very simple. Right? You see here that it's a, it's a standalone type of display of controls, and the navigation is done with. Uh, press the button here and there, and this is their, their, uh, some of their characteristics. On the, on the weak picker too, we have, we have more functionality. First of all, these are, this is a display from Trimble, and whatever system you use for other here can be used for this function. Okay, this is a 100% isobox compatible system. Okay, so one band that's right there is that you don't need to buy a new Controller that you can use one to do a uh, app versus here you have to buy your own controller. Okay, uh, graphical display, touch screen navigation, easy. Um, in the case of WeedSeeker, what, what we do is there are settings which define our spawn before and after. Already mentioned that. And a very important element here DPS. These are Integrated with GPS. Okay. So it allows to expand more into applications when we want to use uh, information, uh, geographical information systems. This is a nice view of this display that I found online. Um, it shows you the different sections, it shows you which one is open, which, which ones are closed. And this is sensitivity, and this is the, the button where you press to increase. And either system has. Constant monitoring of the of the operational system, like like pressure on the line, uh, voltage, everything else, and both of them can be upgraded to firmware. Every year, there is a new update, so they can then upgrade and more functionality. Now, a couple of sensitivity. I chose to set get this point only by itself. Sensitivity. VIT has only five levels. One for five, so that's it. That's all it is for the user to select which level of sensitivity they want to be. No further um, guidance. On WeedSeeker 2, what we have, what we have is this situation where we have a dynamic sort of background cal uh, calibration. That is how the system is constantly looking at the soil, the dirt ground, and adjusting the values of the background. Okay. So as you go, you're working 10 
hours, or people that are participating in hours, but during those 10 hours, the adjustment <coughs> is changing in the trajectory of the back. That is dynamic. On top of that, there is the sensitivity that we add, it's called the margin in our case, and it is in this case from 1 to 30. If those numbers are only numerical values, They're, they don't represent anything else. Um, it gets a software, but you have more, if you have a much wider uh, span to choose from. Okay, and let's, let's use these two things to describe tra um, trade-offs. That's, that's my, my point here. In this topic, we actually see a lot of trade -offs. I already mentioned one about get the fence closer to the ground, everything becomes better, right? Um, but you are, now it's more problem. Like you get it up, get a better economy, you get a, the cost of efficient, but you have um, a weaker signal. So this is the second threshold to talk about. Whatever point you, whatever the, um, whatever sensitivity value you select here, well, these are the two risks. And this is the more important risk. And that is, if we set something too high, well, we are more um, conservative in our use of chemical, but we risk using small, small units. Okay? If we lower this, we reduce our, our chemical economy, talking about more, we spray in more, but uh, the, the problem because is all part. Okay, so you get the point. It is a more just very. Um, I'll say Bruce, that this is the more the, 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 the. You have a really bad weed interpretation. Right. You said it, or you don't get well with it. Um, I'll say that if it's that contrasting in the field, the operator can press these buttons and trip. These buttons group are exactly this. That, that this is set by the machine, by the system. You have no control of this, which is a great thing actually. This is what you have control. So if if the operator finds a minimum repeat that is worth no in weeds. Right. He can, he or she can adjust. Or, yes, it's set it by the Okay. Don't get me to quality. All right, so this is the point. Uh, now I'm going to talk about uh, performance sensitivity. Again, two years ago, we have some testing. The 2021 season was cut short in. Um, I'm sorry, this is this is wrong. This we did 2020. This is better This should be 2020. Okay. Now um, it got got short for a variety of reasons, but this is work that Randy Norton did in in Sapper, and he tested all those five levels of sensitivity, all five of them. And when he measured for some of the small weeds, less than one inch in diameter. What he found compared to the genus spray, this is how miss, miss weeds happen in the group. Okay. I did something different. What I did here in my book is I used sensors to look before the application and after the application. So when I see those two sensors and signals and I compare them to the same location, I work. I was expecting to have three before and dead plants after. Only a normal sensitivity. And I tested the same five levels of um, sensitivity and looking at the difference. Being on the positive side of this delta quantity is means that the after condition was there was less sensitivity. Um, be smaller reflected because there was, there was less vegetation. If you see negative, actually the vegetation increased by the time we did our after spray. So, so it wasn't good in any way that I can, that I can see it from a count that happened in paper, uh, from 
a sensor base that won't tell you you can put it. It's it's very faulty. So you cannot rely on this. In this condition, I'll say use your technology. It's uh, there's no point in making investments to be in this area of risk. Or all right. Yeah. This is this is just like keep you away. <laughs> All right, so um, I guess um, now yeah, another error. This is with Seeker two, two thousand twenty-one. Sorry for that. So anyway, we did this in twenty twenty-one, and we got uh, set up an experiment where we position and here reference one hundred forty-nine weeds. And pieces of, of, of uh, Bermuda grass that we set in the field for the purpose of doing the detect. And again, for me, the purpose is a weed detected, a weed that will be field. That's all I can do. Okay. So that's what we set up. And our instrumentation is, is an integrated with the system in such a way that every time the, the, the weed seeker tube sends a signal, we capture that signal and we measure the time that is the duration of the time that it is. Okay, so it was a very nice experiment, 1200 feet long. And these are the results. Some of the results. First, on the, on the left, what, what I'm showing you here is that since we get very, very accurate monitoring of the time, and the spray is open, it is it's pretty long, then we know. 100% of the time, we get, we get, we know how much is the total time, and then the percentage of time that goes on during those 1,200 feet. And what you see here is that even in the case that you are very liberal in your, not politics, liberal in your use of chemicals, you're still only using 30% of your chemicals. Okay? You are saving 70%, even in that, in that case where you are. Spraying with a, in a very liberal way. Uh, the thing declines here. Now you are um, you are in the fifty percent time. So for eighty five percent of the time, that was was off. So that is directly directly connected with chemical use in house. Okay. Now what happens with the performance in terms of detection? Well, it happens what you were expecting, right? From very low uh, percentage of, of um, weeds that we did not detect from five to thirty. So I'll say this: this is this is way too long. Way too many weeds that we are leaving so they will grow and, and create a significant problem for us. But here's something interesting: if you go faster, performance is better. This is embedded in the algorithm of the system. I don't know how they often. I can only test it. Uh, Fashion, right? So what we're going to do this in 2022 is, is test this at five, ten miles an hour. Very important. What will be a, a, a normal speed of operation in this field for herbicide application? Two and a half to three. Is that right? That, that's good. Yeah. And that type of stuff, yeah. I mean, this is within the range of the But we are testing this at a higher speed. Okay, so what was interesting that I did at the end? I don't know how much time we have. Okay, okay so I, I did an analysis of those weeds that we did not detect. Okay, and what we found is that two thirds of them were for you This is really um, they're in a state. Are dormant and they're not very active. So maybe that was maybe as far as size, smaller and smaller those areas of Bermuda uh, grass or wheat. So where the thirds also were not detected. And this is a very interesting one. Location inside the profile of the thorough. Two plants are in the middle. Well, most of them. Again, the thirds of them were in the center, right where it is 
the easiest to see them, right? Where the easiest to control them to conservation. That is the effect of the field of the year. It was a single two weeks to take this back to the right? So this is a process we need to do to understand um, empirically how we can adjust our settings to that type of form. I'm going to finish with this. There's a lot of text here, um, but it's a highly very useful for you. First, uh, is that in this line of work that I'm as an engineer, small plot research, it, it tends to buy the results in an extraordinary way. Best thing to do this test is in your fields, right? In a five acre field, we have the right scale of test. So these are very sensitive, these results are extremely sensitive to we population. And how we can have that impact? That's not possible. What we're doing is we're incredibly creating a forest test factors online. Okay? It's, it's painful, but that's our first step. Don't be surprised, I'll, I'll talk to you guys later. Say, where can we test this? So that's my step. I'm aware of it. Okay, so, and what parameters can I refer to? It's a uh, center geometry. Where do I place it? The manufacturing company is very close. Awesome. So now I have to buy two per project. Or I give these people a deal of exiting. I can just look at the money. That is a prime parameter. Sensitivity, of course. There are, there are, there are user selectable networks. So, but city corresponds to what we population. Good. And how about not the collection? So therefore, something here that needs to be tested factorially so we know how those factors you know, it, it interact. The next section is that clearly we IT show a tendency to make it more to get triggered by benefits testing of release to this part. I'm passing that to you, but my observation, so I have the data to validate my statement. Okay. But what I'm gonna say next has to do with the lab. Uh, statement, but there is the second one is that there are major differences in functionality between the controls. Okay, I keep hearing that. So the next thing to you ready, I was seeing growers using John Deere Treble to other spheres, and after doing the after listing your beds, the system is it turns out that you are There's so much other functions that can be done with the same control. Okay, so for me. My mind looking at efficiency, I, I said there is so much, so much to gain in efficiency. If you use your controller, your piece of computer that is as powerful as your as your cell phone, here is outstanding. Well, every year those those systems are also better and better and better. Okay. And of course, something that I am not presenting today because I don't have it is cost information, right? So I know very little of this cost. It will come. So I'm finished with this last, last statement. And I'm gonna keep in mind that precision I get your way is not in partnership with any spot frame technology provider. We are not, regardless of the living social media messages. Get on your phone and you see all, that. all kinds of things said about partnerships in the USA and the Manufacturer, aggressive marketing campaigns of a local Arizona dealership. And so it's one of the many things that we see misinformation following. You ever thought about a group that close to my work to have this information happen? So I'll go back to one of the things that Peter mentioned to me when I first came in 2007. We engage in unbiased anticipation. We are scientists. And we, we defend that uh, with, with a special value because we don't do that. Then we, we, are, we lose our function. <laughs> we do not validate commercial effects. It can be a process, to do, but not something that you read online, not something that you get a sales rep in your field saying, 
Thank you for your attention. And, um, Ayman, is it time or is it? I think we can postpone the question. Sure. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Oh, yeah.